right guys, it's just an overview of this job. Let's give you a quick scan round. So the brief here was to fence the top of the wall here, just to give a bit more privacy. Obviously I had to step it with the wall on this side. We framed it on this side. It's all being clad with uh, overlap boards. Uh, this side, because I didn't want to attach posts to the neighbour's wall, we've had to put in 4x4 four four posts. So the fence will stand off slightly, stand off the wall slightly. But it'll still give you the enclosed. Again, we're going to have to step it down. So that's where we are at the moment. So I'm just in the process of cementing in the posts. I was just filming there uh, with the, the breaker. It's a petrol breaker that I use. It's an invaluable tool, it's great. These posts are fitted down the back of the wall uh, with Thunderbolt. Obviously framed. So we'll be cladding this with overlapping boards and then we'll put a capping piece along the top. That's it, so I'm just waiting for this post to go off slightly and then we'll get this framed. And we can start cutting the, the individual boards. All the boards are going to have to be cut individually. Hence why I've got the wee uh, miter saw. Which again, another invaluable tool, uh, cordless. So it just means you can take it on the site and, and cut the boards as you need them. Perfect. So, I'll get back to it and we'll update you later. Alright guys, that's all the framing done. Probably have to step it down with the wall here. Kept it above the wall here, all even. Again, stepped it up. So it's all framed, just need to get the boards on now. Right, so I'm just in the process of boring these out. Obviously I need to cut all these boards to the same size, up to this point here, and then they'll raise up slightly. So what I've done there, it's the beauty of having the miter saw stand with you and the miter saw. You can just set the stop to the same distance, and just cut multiple boards at the same length. So that's how I'm cutting the boards. I've made a little jig. This is just a jig, which leaves an inch overlap, so I can butt the next board up against that inch, screw it in, and then take the jig off and move along. So that's the way we're doing it. guys I'm just in the process of boarding out this full length here so as I said earlier I've cut all these boards to size um, I'm just overlapping the boards by about an inch uh, I'm just going to show you how I do that now I'm using a jig here right so here's my jig I've just sprayed it white just for a, just to identify it you know if it falls in amongst other wood so it's just a simple board just with a batten attached on the back this is the gap that I'm looking for so I'll show you how we use that now Okay, so simply place the jig in against this fixed board, push it tight and clamp it in position. Get 
the next board, butt it up against the jig, lift it up slightly until it's flush with the top. Right, a couple of important things here is when I'm doing this, I purposely cut the boards five millimeters short of the wall. So I don't know if you can see, we've got a gap between the board and the wall. You don't want that sitting, you know, straight on the concrete. You know, if this rains and water sits on the wall, uh, the, the wood will wick the water and then that rots, or creates more chance of the, the boards rotting. Also, when these were all cut, I, I pre-treated them as well. So you can see the cut ends here have all been treated. Uh, I've just used Cooper and all ducks back for that. So underneath the boards has been treated. We've got the gap slightly off the wall just to stop water ingress. And on the top, that'll all be treated and there'll be a cap and rail that sits on the top to stop water getting into the end grain. Okay, so the screws, you see me using the screws here. What I use is 4.5 by 50 Timco Deccan screws. You can see these are coated um, for focus. Yeah, totally weather resistant. They're good screws, these I use them all the time, so that's what we're using. Uh, I think I said earlier I'm not using the, the nail gun for these because I tend to find with these, you know, when you're fixing these boards close into the edge here, if you use the nail gun, you know, it bangs through and you tend to get a lot of splits, uh, which causes a lot of waste, so uh, I just. I just find this, more, when you're doing this method, just more convenient to use screws. There's four on here to do, so I'll just continue doing that and then we'll, we'll pick it up where we left off. Another thing I'll mention is that the reason you overlap the boards by an inch is because these boards, fencing timber always shrinks. And if you just butt them hard together with the square edge in the summer when it's dry, they shrink and it opens up and gives you a, you know, a two or three mil gap. Hence the reason why we're overlapping the boards. And you may be thinking as well that, you know, to use this method, a lot of people use feather edge boards, which are normally 22 mil thick there and, and taper down to seven mil at the edge there. And it's just overlapped. But the reason I'm using the 19 mil thick boards here, square edge, uh, because because of the climate. Uh, this is a, I live in the northeast of Scotland. Um, the winds are notorious. You can see just over the back of there is the North Sea, so the winds just come this way. So I, I always tend to beef up my materials a bit um, and always incorporate that into my design of fence. So that's why we're using that type of boards. Right, so here's a top view of the fence. This is the rail here. These are the boards that were overlapping. So this is where the screw goes. Right through here into the rail. Then same here. So effectively each board has four screws in it. That side, this side, so it's a really strong, really strong design, a really private design. Okay, so that's that side finished, boarded out now. So we're pretty much boarded all the way around now. All that remains to be done now is the, the capping piece on top. So along the whole top of the fence there'll be a capping piece, which we'll, we'll show you now. Okay, so these are the capping rails that we put on. This whole rail, if you can see the profile here, so this sits on top of the fence to protect the end grains of the boards. So the top of the boards gets protected by the capping. The capping's profiled with an angle both sides, and what that does is when the water hits it in the rain, it just disperses the water. So it stops it going into the end grain of the fence and rotting the fence. Uh, plus, it gives it a neater finish as well. So. We'll get that on all the way around. Right, I'm in the process of putting the capping on. So these come in 3.6 metres uh, lengths. So obviously you need to join some of them in long runs of fence. Yeah, it's 
So we're putting the capping on. We'll cap these three sections here. I might have a 45 in the corner there. And to join these, I've been mitering. We'll miter this at 45. We'll miter the next rail at 45 to mate into this. That should give us a seamless sort of join, so you won't, you shouldn't really see it. Or it'll minimise the, you know, as opposed to putting a square joint in. So we'll do that, I might have the next one, butt it up against it. Fix that all the way along and then do the next run, that'll be us finished. Okay, so you can see by might have been uh, the top rail, you get a much neater finish. So here's the might here's the 45s of V-cut. You can see that there, as opposed to a straight cut across there where it could open up and give you a gap. And if this opens up slightly, you still won't, you won't really see it. Okay, so we're just finishing off the cap in this corner. So we've got another mitre join here. So we've just mitered them at 45, coated them in treatment. See the join side on, you can't, it's hardly noticeable. We'll get that all screwed in. That'll do this. Right guys, it's a finished fence. So we're taking it. Just pan around, give you an overview of the whole fence. It's a pity we couldn't get uh, battens on the back of this wall. You know, it would have been more seamless, but I think the owner will probably paint these white. Uh, there's actually a dog kennel going in here as well, so that'll hide that. So it's turned out fine. It took a bit of working out this one, how to do this bit here, because ideally we would have taken it straight across, but then it would have meant this whole back section would have been about eight foot high. So we had to put that to six foot and take that as a datum point. So hence, this is all six foot along here. And we just had to keep it the same. Keep the, the top the same. But we've obviously had to step this up because if we took off this reference point, took that right along there, as I've just said, it would have been far too high. We could have actually sloped it down as well, but this is what the owner decided. So just in case anybody's wondering why the design is the way it is. So originally, if you remember this, there's a wall in behind here, but it only came up to this height. So even if you could attach the, the post to the back of this wall, it would have just been too high and, you know, walloping about. So hence the reason we went for four by four posts. And this section, let's give you a close up of, so pretty much all the way along here. stages we said just to follow the gradient of the wall. This corner here is six foot. So we've used that as the datum point as I said, taking it right round. Right guys as always thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this content please give it a thumbs up, uh, comment if you like. Uh, that would be much appreciated. Any of you guys, if you're watching and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe by clicking that button there. Um, and my current subscribers, thank you as always, much appreciated, and hopefully we'll see you in the next one guys. Okay, thank you, cheers.